What's good, y'all? Sport Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out the rise and fall of Mr. Kennedy and WWE. Now, Mr. Kennedy was supposed to be like the next guy up. He had this unique entrance. He had this. He was charismatic. You know, he he had the the microphone coming down from the ceiling, and he would say what he would say, and then he would hit the Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy, like it, it worked. They even gave him the money in the bank briefcase, and things uh went downhill quickly. Things went down quick. Things went downhill quickly. He was going to be the next star up, and it's crazy how certain things can happen, and backstage politics can can damn near ruin a, a, a mega star's push. Like he was on the cusp of getting there. He was. It was getting over. The Mr. Kennedy stuff was getting over. So we're going to check out how things ultimately went downhill for him in WWE. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this video, man. When Mr. Kennedy debuted in 2005, he showed a lot of promise. His unique entrance where he grabbed the microphone to announce himself immediately caught the fans' attention. Kennedy oozed confidence and his cocky brash heel persona set him apart from the crowd and his solid in-ring skills yeah. made him a reliable performer for a while it seemed that he could do no wrong he was winning matches cutting memorable promos and rising up the ranks it felt like just a matter of time before he became a main event heel but almost overnight everything changed injuries controversies and backstage politics derailed his career. This is the story of the rise and fall of Mr. Kennedy. Ken Kennedy made his WWE main roster debut in August 2005 and he beat Funaki. Kennedy's debut included that unique entrance where he grabbed the microphone from the ring announcer and berated him before introducing himself. Before the bell even rang, Kennedy was instantly dislikable. Mm -hmm. Him schooling the ring announcer in how to do their job was a brilliant piece of heel work. In good. these early weeks on the roster, Mr. Kennedy quickly established himself as a memorable heel. He was just really easy to hate. And that's Kennedy's good. initial and That's what you want. You want you want to make a lasting impression. And what better way? where fans don't know who you are because fans are quick to boo you they don't know who you are or whatever but you want to give them a reason to boo you for the right reasons like why is he such an asshole he hasn't done anything yet he beat a jobber why is he such a prick it works and then it played into his gimmick of the microphone coming from the ceiling and he introducing himself it, it, it worked bro he, they had something with him, man. Matches on SmackDown saw him defeating a series of enhancement talents and even beat Rey Mysterio and Booker T. At No Mercy in October, he faced Hardcore Holly in his first pay-per-view match. Kennedy beat him in just eight minutes. Now he'd started cutting promos via his own personal microphone that would become one of his most memorable character traits. Yeah. Kennedy was already checking those boxes that WWE loved to see. He had a unique look, he was decent in the ring, and most importantly, he could talk. talk. He suffered his first loss on TV to Eddie Guerrero via DQ, and notably, this was Eddie's last ever match before he sadly passed away. A crazy. massive setback to Kennedy's career came at the end of November 2005 when he suffered a major muscle injury that put him out of action for over six months. But it was clear that WWE was still extremely high on Kennedy because they kept him on TV. He showed up on commentary for SmackDown and Velocity and he appeared in some backstage segments too and he had an appearance on Bite This. When he returned to action in July 2006, he soon suffered his first defeat via pinfall to Matt Hardy. At the Great American Bash, it was supposed to be Batista versus Mark Henry, but Henry suffered a knee injury before the match could take place. And so, SmackDown General Manager Teddy Long 
announced that there was a gap that needed filling in that match. Cue Mr. Kennedy cockily answering the call and Batista showing up not too long after. Batista told Teddy to go ahead and book the match because he just wanted to kick someone's ass. This was a big step up for Kennedy mm -hmm. and it would be his first real test on pay-per-view and he bled heavily from the mm -hmm. very start. The referee disqualified Batista after eight minutes thanks to him not releasing a chokehold. <laughs> Backstage, Kennedy required 20 stitches in his head to close up the wound. He came out of that match looking incredible. He looked like a far bigger star than when he went in. He went on to win the United States title in September 2006, but this next feud would be where his career escalation would go into overdrive as he faced The Undertaker. Yep. Kennedy confidently bragged that he'd beaten everyone on SmackDown and he wanted to move to Raw. Teddy Long told him to hold on right there, player, and booked him in a match with the one man that he certainly hadn't beaten, the dead man, at no mercy. In bro, yeah, this feud definitely skyrocketed him, bro. This was the feud that really put people into the mindset of, this guy, we got something here. We, we, can, we can get behind this. I remember this, man. October. There was a nice bit of character development here as Kennedy played scaredy cat heel while also trying to maintain his bravado. Kennedy said that the match should be cancelled because he didn't want to be the person to damage the legendary career of The Undertaker. Naturally, The Undertaker didn't back down and he even made Kennedy's microphone explode at one point. <laughs> at no mercy, Kennedy once again proved himself <laughs> on pay-per-view. Uh -huh. The match was a little bit too long in my opinion, and the finish was terrible, with The Undertaker attacking Kennedy with the belt and getting himself disqualified. Well, yeah. But the feud wasn't over, not by a long shot. The Undertaker distracted Kennedy during a match with Chris Benoit, causing him to lose his United States Championship. And that was the end of Kennedy's one and only WWE title reign. He then teamed up with MVP to take on the Brothers of Destruction, yep. which led to a first blood match with The Undertaker at the Survivor Series. Unlike their first match, this one was a little bit too short at just under 10 minutes, but Kennedy got another win over The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Their third and final pay-per-view yeah, match was at ride, Armageddon, yeah. where Kennedy lost to the dead man in a last ride match. Kennedy this. was now approaching the apex of his WWE career, as he earned the chance to face Batista for the World Heavyweight Championship at the Royal Rumble. Kennedy got lots of offense in here over a short 10-minute match, and again, he was booked to look really, really strong. But in the end, Batista pinned him to retain the title. But the intent was there from WWE that this man was going to be a future World Heavyweight yep. Champion. Mm -hmm. And at WrestleMania 23, he ascended... They were testing the waters, bro. That's literally... If they have you going out there with one, The Undertaker, and having a program with him, multiple matches... And then they have you going out there with the world champion to only put you in a money in the bank match to win it. They clearly, yeah, they, they're, they're looking at you as, all right, we're going to put a championship on you. You're going to be a top champion. The ladder to win the money in the bank briefcase. The Undertaker was the champion at the time, but he suffered a torn biceps muscle. And the plan was for Kennedy to cash in the briefcase on him crazy, and become bro. the new world champion. So Instead, crazy. his career hit a fork in the road. And what follows from here is one of the biggest downfalls in WWE history. Kennedy himself became injured after apparently tearing his tricep, which would have put him out of action for up to seven months. And so, they did an angle where mm -hmm. Edge beat him for the briefcase yep. instead, and he went on to cash it in on The Undertaker. Yep. However, it turned out that Kennedy's injury had been misdiagnosed. Instead of a torn tricep, he had a hematoma, 
which would have only kept him out of action for a few weeks, instead of several months, That's if only the tough. doctor at the time had correctly diagnosed Kennedy. His career could have been entirely different. He, he would have had the path that Edge had. That's fucked, bro. All because the doctor got it wrong. That's fucked up. I didn't, knew, I didn't know that part of it. Damn. That's cold, bro. Print. When he returned from the injury, he was drafted to Raw, where he dropped down to the upper mid card. A triple threat match for the Intercontinental title with Umaga and Carlito saw Kennedy staring at the lights. There were now signs that WWE was starting to lose faith in him yeah. as their future main event heel. And if the injuries weren't enough for WWE to put the brakes on his career, then him being implicated in a steroid scandal certainly was. Mm. At the time, WWE were doing a story where Vince McMahon had an illegitimate child yeah. who just happened to be one of the men on the roster. It was eventually going to be revealed to be Kennedy, Kennedy yeah. who was the unwanted son of Satan, and that would have led to a feud between himself and Triple H, fighting over who was going to become the eventual heir to WWE. I mean, it works. The illegitimate son of Vincent Kennedy McMahon being Mr. Kennedy. It worked. And then it didn't work. The plan was to have the men wrestle each other in a high profile match at WrestleMania 24, possibly with Vince as the special guest referee. Kennedy had been made aware of the entire storyline from start to finish before it had even began, but in the end it went straight into the trash. The reason was the signature pharmacy scandal. In August 2007, news broke that several WWE superstars were linked to an online pharmacy distributing steroids and other performance enhancing drugs. This was a huge problem for WWE because they were already under scrutiny after the Chris Benoit tragedy a few months earlier. And Kennedy was among those wrestlers who were named. Damn. Just a few days earlier, he'd publicly denied using steroids in an interview with the UK's Sun newspaper. This contradiction really damaged his credibility and WWE had no choice but to suspend him for 30 days. And yeah. all of those plans for WrestleMania with Kennedy wrestling Triple H had to be torn up too. On an October episode of Raw, Kennedy faced John Cena. During the match, Kennedy executed a move that resulted in Cena suffering a torn pectoral muscle. This injury mm -hmm. was severe, with Cena requiring surgery and putting him out of action for several months. There were concerns about Kennedy's in-ring safety mm -hmm. and the management started to view him as a liability. This was combined with the fallout from the signature pharmacy scandal and- Yeah, it was just getting worse and worse for him, bro, with the scandal and then the, him injuring a top, top talent in John Cena at the time. Obviously not on purpose, but it's just like, oh man, it, it, it just, Everything that could go wrong, it was going wrong for him. Bro. Everyone's trust in him was seriously starting to erode. Then he suffered yet another injury. injury. This time it was a dislocated shoulder, keeping him off television for three months. It was during a 10 man tag team match on Raw where Kennedy apparently botched a back body drop on Orton. Orton was furious and complained backstage to management claiming that Kennedy had been reckless. Allegedly, mm -hmm. John Cena was there too, and he backed up Orton's complaints, having the company's two top stars yeah. furiously complaining about him was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was it. Just four days later, on May the 29th, 2009, Mr. Kennedy was released from his WWE contract. This marked the end of his once promising WWE career. It's interesting to think about what might have been if Kennedy hadn't hit 
that fork in the road after winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. How different things would have been if he'd beaten The Undertaker and ascended to the World Heavyweight title, rather than achieving one of the steepest downfalls in WWE history. That's tough, bro. If you really think about it, if that doctor didn't misdiagnose him, and he plans would have went through, he would have been in a better situation because he would have been a top guy. And he would have a little bit more leverage. He would have been in a better situation when it came to backstage politicking or people having issues because he would have been a top guy and they could have definitely made some money off of him and it would have been better, you know. But since he didn't get to that moment, it just everything that was he was on the cusp of getting to something would happen to knock him down it sucks it's, that's really unfortunate um it's just one of those type of things where you hate to see it because he had so much promise in wwe and they really were high up on him at one point but things just started to you know not fall in his favor man so it, it's really an unfortunate situation but Comment down below. Let me know your favorite Mr. Kennedy moment in WWE. Uh, let me know your favorite promo, if you remember, or hit your favorite feud from him. My favorite feud from him, uh, Undertaker, Mr. Kennedy. That was an enjoyable feud. I definitely enjoyed what they were doing there. And it's crazy to know that he was slated to be the guy to beat the undertaker for the world heavyweight championship using the money in the bank briefcase but i appreciate all love and support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all on the next one peace